the latest on SEC injuries heading into week six and which SEC coach has the best odds to be the first head coach fired this season. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along on today's show. We'll get you caught up with all the latest news and notes from all those week uh, midweek press conferences and all that kind of stuff. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. In today's episode, Presented to you by the Game Time app. Download Game Time, create an account, use our code Locked On College, get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Uh, game Time, great app. All right, we need to jump into. It. We got plenty of stuff to get to, so let's dive into it. We're gonna go around the conference. So let's do it. Boots out to the right. Takes the handoff. Around the conference. And we stop off over at Texas AM, biggest game of the weekend in the SEC. It is number nine, Mizzou, at number 25, Texas AM. This will be Saturday morning in College Station. Mike Elko sharing an update on quarterback Connor Wigman on Monday. Told reporters Wigman will be a game time decision on Saturday. Still battling through that shoulder injury that has. Kept him out the last couple of weeks. He has not played since week two in their win over McNeese State. Now, Marcel Reed has been very good in place of him. Undefeated for the Aggies. Passing stats, not great. Completing just over 54% of his passes. But he's played winning football for them. And uh, it's going to be another top 10 matchup for Texas A&M. They hosted Notre Dame back in week one. Now, over at Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz... Talked about the quarterback situation at AM. In fact, the Aggies uh, listing Connor Wigman as still their starter on the team's depth chart this week and Elko calling him a game time decision. Eli Drinkwitz not buying it. He told reporters on Tuesday he expects Marcel Reed to be the starter. Drinkwitz saying, quote, I know on their depth chart it says the other kid is the starting quarterback, but I mean, that's just semantics in my opinion. Reed is 3 0 as a starter. Whether Wigman is listed as questionable or whatever. I don't see them going back. They're 3-0. They clearly have a different offensive identity with Marcel Reed as the QB, and they've developed an offense that fits around his system. It's a lot different than the first game of the year. So if they go with the other one, they go with the other one. But they've already kind of built the offense towards Marcel. Uh, Drinkwitz noted that, uh, like we said, Reed is 3-0. and um, I don't know it's a little ballsy on, on Drinkwitz's part, right, to say, like, Ah, they're lying to us. They're they're not going to go back to Wigman. Wigman was talked about as a potential first-round pick next year in some people's draft boards. Like, kind of an interesting uh, case there. But, yeah, I mean, how can you argue against Marcel Reed's been really good for A&M. He's not lost a game since he's been the starter. Now, Drinkwitz was asked about the challenges of playing the first road game of the season at Kyle Field. And Drinkwitz said, quote, number one, going to be hot. Number two, going to be loud. So uh, temps expected in the upper 80s in College Station Saturday morning. There is a slight chance of rain in the afternoon, but that'll be an 11 a.m. kickoff Saturday. Should be a good one. Two top 25 teams, and the Aggies still sitting about a two-point favorite, according to our friends at FanDuel. So Mizzou, first big, tough, tough challenge of the season. All right, in other SEC news, over at South Carolina, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN, number 12 Ole Miss is going to travel to South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks, and Gamecocks putting out their depth chart ahead of this one, and Lenora Sellers back at quarterback for South Carolina. Pete Thamel of ESPN reporting Sellers is expected to be back after recovering from that ankle injury, and um, Sellers initially suffered that injury late in the first half of South Carolina's loss to LSU earlier this month. Robbie Ashford started in place of him against Akron in week four. Also running back Rocket Sanders was fully participating practice as well. According to Shane Beamer, he said, quote, I wouldn't say Sellers and Sanders are 100%, but they both said they feel good and they look great. 
Beamer added he would not say much more about the injuries because it's an SEC game, which means both teams are required to submit the public injury report and update it beginning Wednesday night. So, again, but sounds like for South Carolina's case, if Lenore Sellers and Rocket Sanders both back, could give them a chance facing a top 25 opponent in Ole Miss coming in, looking to bounce back from their recent loss. Carolina is still sitting at about a nine-point underdog this weekend, according to FanDuel. Like we said, kickoff set for 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. Over at Ole Miss, they're hoping to get the taste out of their mouths after the home loss to Kentucky this past weekend. Paul Feinbaum, never shy with his opinions. He was on McElroy and Kublik earlier this week and was asked about Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin. And Feinbaum saying, look, there's no way to say that they're not the same old Ole Miss. I didn't think they were. I thought they had changed. The problem now is you look at Ole Miss and Georgia. One suffered a loss against what's now the number one team in the country. The other one lost at home to Kentucky. The calculus is far worse for Ole Miss. That Patsy schedule did not help them when they finally played a physical team. And I think they have a very difficult path to the playoff. And if they don't get to the playoff, it creates a whole other sideshow and side story about Lane Kiffin and his commitment to Ole Miss and his future. Feinbaum went on to say, I think uh, I think they can afford another loss, but that's it. If they lose to LSU in two weeks, that's it. They're going to have to run the table, and they'll be on the brink the rest of the way. That means they would have to beat Georgia at home. This was a game that Ole Miss had to find a way to win against Kentucky, and Lane Kiffin missed the moment. So it's an interesting argument. I mean, once you know, if you consider yourself a team that should make the playoff and you're you know, the hope is the minimum you got to go is 10 and 2 to make the playoff. If you already got a loss, man, you are really up against it. No room for error the rest of the way. All right. Over at Georgia, Kirby Smart talking about Auburn ahead of their big matchup coming up this Saturday. And uh, Kirby Smart big meeting with the reporters Tuesday evening, talked about the upcoming game. And he made sure to point out that while Auburn's offense has not produced a lot of points. They have been moving the football. Uh, they have been severely limited by turnovers. Kirby Smart saying, quote, Auburn's not getting stopped. They're turning the ball over. A lot of respect for the physicality they play with and how they played. Sometimes it's hard to control turnovers. Uh, Auburn does rank 10th in the SEC in points per game, but third in yards per play. Turnover margin been the problem. Tigers are minus 11 in that department. And uh, nearly triple the next closest SEC team, which is Florida at minus four. So Georgia sitting at about a 24 and a half point favorite against Auburn. A lot of people expect they're going to bounce back and take out their frustrations after that road loss at Alabama. Kirby Smart not giving much update on injuries. Roderick Robinson, the running back, has missed uh, much of this year with the toe injury. Um, there was some hope that, you know, He's dealing with just the turf toe, that it wouldn't be too long of an injury. But still doesn't look to be any closer to getting out there. Kirby Smart talking about asked about the injured players. He said, hopefully they are all able to play. Uh, D. Lyman Jordan Hall has been rehabbing a tibia fresh stra- a stress fracture he suffered against Tennessee last year. Kobe White, wide receiver, suffered a knee injury earlier this year. London Humphreys was dealing with mono. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if they get healthy. But the Bulldogs, like I said, are going to host Auburn on Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. Speaking of Auburn, Peyton Thorne breaking down what happened on that pick six he threw against Oklahoma on Saturday. He was on the next round with those guys talking about the play. So, look, I, I talked to people close to me and our coaches, some of our teammates. Quite honestly, if I had that play over 10 times, I probably would have done the same thing 10 out of 10. It's frustrating. You look back on it, it sucks. I got to give credit to Oklahoma. They had the perfect call for what we were doing. He said, it looked like zero across the board to me. We had five out. We were in empty. When I looked at the receiver, he was in the boundary A gap and basically went on to say, I went to find my receiver. I wasn't able to. The linebacker dropped out. and Boom, he made the play. A couple other tidbits here over uh, on Hugh Freeze's part on Monday. He talked about uh, how it doesn't matter what he says. He's always going to be taken um, as him deflecting the blame. Basically, uh, people asking him about throwing your players under the bus. Hugh Free said, everybody seems to think 
When I just tell you what really happened, I'm throwing somebody under the bus. You free saying maybe I'm just a little too honest sometimes. It's going to happen when you lose. You start to be criticized over everything you say and do. All right. Over at Tennessee, they're getting ready for another tough road trip in the SEC, playing in Fayetteville this Saturday night at Arkansas on ABC. And Josh Heupel, he is hell-bent on keeping his team focused. Monday's press conference, Heupel talked about the parody in college football. He said, look at some of the scores from last weekend around the country. You have to have your focus right here, right now, every day. You have to work and improve every day. The margins are that fine. So people wondering, could Tennessee be on upset alert? Going to Fayetteville, it's a night game on the road. We shall see. Over at uh, Alabama, Kalen DeBoer's staff is looking to make sure his players have moved on from the emotional win over Georgia. Multiple reporters noted that uh, rat traps were all around the athletic facility earlier this week. Alabama, the number one team in the country, and uh, they're going to go take on Vanderbilt Saturday afternoon in Nashville. And some people say it could be a trap game for Alabama. It could be hung over after that emotional Georgia win. Malachi Moore talking with reporters on Tuesday was asked about Alabama's jump to the number one spot. He downplayed it saying, we always thought we were the standard of college football and we're always going to get everybody's best shot. So it doesn't really affect us on Saturday. Whoever we play that week, it's going to be their Super Bowl, a national championship, however you want to call it. We got to be on top of our game each and every week. Now this does mark the first time Alabama has been number one in the AP poll since the 2022 season. One more uh, tidbit here over at Vanderbilt. Diego Pavia is, uh, he knows they're playing Alabama this weekend, and uh, he talked to 24-7 Sports about his team and Vanderbilt being improved this year. He said this is a whole new team. In the NIL area. era, every team will be different every single year. We got a team full of dogs who prepare every week like they want to play on Sundays. So with that, the only person that knows who's going to win on Saturday is God. So we'll be prepared. We're going to do everything we can to win a football game. Fell just short to the number seven team in the country. So we got to get that, get over that little edge and then start punching some wins here. Of course, Vanderbilt uh, upset Virginia Tech in week one. Had a close loss to Missouri and Columbia falling 30 to 27. So we'll see. Pavi has been nice for Vanderbilt. Made some plays. See if uh, what they can do against the Tide on Saturday afternoon in. Nashville. All right. Thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we will uh, continue to go around the conference. Got some more tidbits, including uh, some TV ratings tidbits that you don't want to miss. That's coming your way here in just a second. Well, first, I want to remind you guys today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at at the game time app and look game time has a new feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier uh game time picks filters out all the fluff uh to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets game time picks curation makes it easier to save more on sporting events uh, they're all-in pricing feature. I love that when you toggle that one up front. Shows you the total. No surprise f- fees at checkout. And, of course, their lowest price guarantee at game time will credit you 110, 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork work out of buying tickets with game time. Go download the game time app. Create an account. Use our code Locked On College. Get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem our code Locked On College. Get $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It is game time. I right, roll along here, locked on SEC. Man, we got more and more tidbits we got to get into. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to every day. Keep going back and checking us out. We'll have some more great shows throughout the week, including our SEC squad show, which comes out Thursday. Uh, afternoons getting you set for the previewing the games that weekend. All right, let's dive back into it as we head out to Kentucky. Mark Stoops had a great week as the Wildcats upset Old Miss on the road. And on Tuesday afternoon, he was rewarded. Mark Stoops 
was named the Bear Bryant Awards Fan Favorite Coach of the Week. This is the fifth time in program history that Kentucky beat a team in the top six. And, of course, a school that uh, perennially a basketball school, but football has had its moments here in the Mark Stoops era, and that one was certainly one of the biggest. But uh, Alquette's defense came to play. They uh, held Ole Miss's offense in check, and Mark Stoops getting the honor being named the Bear Bride Awards fan favorite coach of the week. It was uh, Kentucky's first one in Oxford since 1978 and the highest AP ranked victory of the Mark Stoops era. Now, speaking of Mark Stoops on Monday, he was uh, doing some national radio, was asked about the decision to go for it late in the fourth quarter, fourth and seven from his own 20. They, of course, converted with, I think it was a 67-yard pass play. Stoops said, look, there's always the instinct in your gut to feel what you need to do. Every game is a little bit different. Every situation is a little bit different. He said, I don't strictly listen to analytics. I know what they say at the moment because I have somebody feeding it to me at all times. So I knew where I was in the circumstance uh, there against Ole Miss and, of course, the one late against Georgia. The next text, test for Kentucky will be week seven, taking on Vanderbilt. Over at Arkansas, they're getting ready to host number four Tennessee on Saturday. And the Razorbacks sending some instructions to their home fans. They are being asked to stripe out Razorback Stadium. Arkansas and Tennessee have faced each other 19 times. The Vols hold the 13-6 to lead in the series. But uh, going to stripe it out. Should look good on uh, television there. We'll see what uh, Arkansas can do. That offense, Taylor Green, Jaquin and Jackson, still the SEC's leading rusher. Should be a good one. Over at Oklahoma, Bob Stoops, former head coach, was impressed what he saw out of their new quarterback, Michael Hawkins, who got his first start on the road at Auburn and picked up the win for Oklahoma. But Stoops talked about Hawkins' first career start on Oklahoma radio this week. He said, I thought he was outstanding. Played within himself, played smart. Love the fact in certain situations when nothing was there, he threw the ball away. Sometimes you got to do that. Live to play another series. Don't make a big mistake. Thought overall that is what he did. So Hawkins uh, taking over for Jackson Arnold, who was benched, and he's done a good job. Got him into the end zone a couple times late in that Tennessee game and then got a big road win at Auburn. Oklahoma, they are idle this week, but that big one against Texas coming up next week in Dallas, the Red River rivalry will be a big one. All right, one other uh, tidbit here I wanted to get to on the uh, TV rating side, and this goes to Alabama, Georgia. Both teams are ranked in the top five in prime time, and it was a big ratings win for ESPN and ABC as the uh, showdown for Tuscaloosa drew 12 million viewers on ABC. It was the most watched regular season primetime game on any network since 2017, it was also ESPN's most streamed regular season college football game on record ever. That's how much this game between the SEC behemoths resonated with the country. I know people get tired of, oh, SEC, SEC. Yeah, everyone wants to watch the SEC. It is the pinnacle of college football. Uh, at its peak on Saturday night, Alabama, Georgia drew 14.1 million viewers on ABC. It's kind of crazy because it was a blowout at halftime. Means people stuck around or came back, but the uh, Alabama Georgia showdown was not the only SEC ratings winner on Saturday. The Oklahoma Auburn game drew 5 million viewers, peaking at 6.9 million. It was the most watched afternoon game of last week. And then the uh, noontime slot, Kentucky's upset at Ole Miss drew 4 million viewers, peaking at 6.5 million. It was the highest rated noon game of last week. So, look, just telling you, the Romance between the SEC and ABC and ESPN, it's working out. And I think it was Clay Travis tweeted, like, CBS, what were you thinking? Like, you should have invested the money and kept the SEC on CBS. It has been a massive, massive win so far for ABC and ESPN. One other note, uh, College Game Day, they're seeing their greatest rating success uh, as well. Not only did that uh, showdown between Georgia and uh, Georgia and Alabama deliver, but game day averaged 2.3 million viewers throughout last week with the final hour of viewership raising to 3 million. 
Ratings up an astounding 38% over the week five pregame ratings from last season. And uh, numbers also show interest in college football this early in the season is at an all-time high. Good news for college game day. Now, they will be taking their show on the road to a non-SEC venue this week. They will be heading out to Cal for their matchup against number eight Miami. So good luck on that one. Uh, one other note, I know we've, t- God, we've talked so much Georgia Bama this week, but I, I feel the need to bring this up. Joel Klatt, Fox analyst, does his podcast and makes appearances on all the Fox shows. He was talking about uh, Alabama getting the number one spot after beating Georgia, and he said the discussion about which team feels better about gets a little more interesting considering the way the game went down. Of course, Bama raced out to the 28 nothing lead, 30-7 to halftime lead. He said, to me, quite honestly, it's a pretty obvious conclusion. I feel better about Georgia than I do about Alabama coming away from that game. I get it. Alabama won, which is why they're rewarded with the top spot. But I also believe in this sport and candidly in life, the cream generally rises to the top. He went on to say he felt the longer the game went on, the more Georgia looked like the truly better team. So as time goes on, what you see is one team start to become a better team and reveal that they are the better team than the other. And that's what I believe was starting to happen in the second half. If you're an Alabama fan, you're going to be incensed that I have this opinion and you deserve to feel the way you feel because you won the football game. What I saw in the second half was a Georgia team start to pick apart the weaknesses that Alabama has. Look, I, I, I get what he's saying there, but also like Georgia took the lead and Alabama answered and retook the lead. So I get the point he's making. Like, yes, did Georgia play much better in the second half? Absolutely. But what are we doing here? Like they, they Bama answered and came back. It's not like Bama just didn't score any points in the second half and Again, you know, was it a near collapse? Sure. But they answered and took the lead and then got the big interception in the final minute to seal the deal. All right. Still more to come here on Locked On SEC, part of Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. Talking latest odds on first head coach to be fired. We will hit on that here in just a second. Well, first, today's episode brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Look, if you're an NFL fan, college football fan, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out all the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets over at FanDuel. You can get started with $200 of bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. And some great lines up there right now. Ole Miss minus nine at South Carolina. If you feel like the Rebels are going to cover that number, or if you like South Carolina the upset, you can certainly jump on that. Uh, Georgia. Minus 24 and a half right now against Auburn. How you feel about that one? AM still sitting at about a two-point favorite against Mizzou. They're at home. Mizzou's higher ranked, but Mizzou getting two on the road. If you like them to pull off the upset, you can get a good uh line there over at fanduel.com. Just go check them out. Fanduel.com is the website. You can download the app and again take advantage of that. Uh, make that five dollar bet and get the two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed only with FanDuel. All right, continue on here on Locked On SEC, part of Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. Uh, we had a guest on earlier this week, Trey Wallace. And so we, um, it was tremendous, by the way. Appreciate Trey coming on with us. Does a uh, great job covering the SEC in college football. But we did not get a chance to bring you the players of the week. And uh, it included Jalen Milrow, Ryan Williams, um, Defensive player of the week was Kip Lewis of the Oklahoma Sooners. Freshman of the week was uh, Ryan Williams. And uh, offensive player of the week, Jalen Noro. So no surprise on those, but just wanted to pass that along. All right, let's get into it as the uh, college football odds have emerged on the first power four coach to be fired on the upcoming season. And uh, coming in, There's a tie atop this list, and at plus 250, it is Dave Aranda at Baylor, which Baylor's just been kind of a mess, and they blew that game against Colorado just two weeks ago. They had the lead and uh, blew that one, but 
How about from the SEC? It is Billy Napier at plus 250. And here's what uh, here's what 24-7 Sports says. They said, uh, Billy Napier went from ignoring hot seat buzz to addressing speculation head on after early season falters with Florida. Many thought the hammer would come after they lost to Texas A&M, but they responded with a blowout win over Mississippi State before their bye week. Billy Napier's job security has been an obvious distraction at a program that has suffered consecutive losing seasons under his watch and faces the toughest remaining schedule in the country. They are 2-2. Two and two. They play UCF this Saturday, and they are home underdogs. I believe UCF is about a three-point favorite. They're saying a loss to UCF Saturday night will be tough to overcome. But then I feel like we've been saying this every week about Billy Napier, like, man, a loss there would be tough to overcome. So. We'll see, but Billy Napier still sits as the favorite for first uh, Power Four head coach to be fired, tied with Dave Arant. And now some other names from the SEC on this list. Sam Pittman is sitting there at plus 500. 24-7 Sports says, it's obvious what's at stake for Sam Pittman in Arkansas. Should he fail to impress the Razorbacks fan base and donors, he'll be out as coach. A bad UAB team battled Arkansas to a one-score game in the fourth quarter before they pulled away and faulty late game execution at Oklahoma state squandered an opportunity there. And then Saturday's lost to Texas A&M, another heartbreaker, another one score loss. And Sam Pittman has lost 11 of his last 13 at the program in single possession outcomes. He's not getting it done at a level Arkansas needs of him. And he's now 26 and 27 overall 12 and 24 in conference play. That is mediocrity. So Sam Pittman at plus 500. And then rounding out this list, and Auburn fans are going to, I mean, you're going to say it's crazy, but they got Auburn head coach Hugh Freeze at plus 1,500. And uh, here's what 24-7 Sports says. Forget the gargantuan buyout. If Auburn boosters want Hugh Freeze gone, they can do just about anything. And they have shown uh, previously with struggling regimes. Athletic Director John Cohen voiced his support for Freeze Prior to Auburn's letdown against Oklahoma, Freeze's team blew an 11-point lead in the fourth quarter. There's noticeable recruiting momentum, yes, but will that continue if the product on the field continues to be subpar? Interesting. Our our buddy Zach Blackerby and a few other folks have said, Hugh Freeze is not going to be fired. Like he's, he's, he's building so much momentum and recruiting and all this, and he's building it his way, and it's just going to take some time. And yeah, the Peyton Thorne mess is bad, and the turnovers are bad, but the future still looks bright. Well, Auburn's last three of their last four. And all five of their first five home uh, first five games of the season were all at home. The next three are all on the road, and it's at Georgia, at Mizzou, and at Kentucky. They get Vandy at home, they get Yo Monroe at home, and then they finish with Texas A&M at home and at Bama. I mean, that is potentially five losses right there. And a two and three, you're looking at four and eight. I mean, that look, they're not going to go four and eight, I don't think. But again, it's potentially eight losses on the year with that schedule. So, look, if if you freeze goes five and seven, but they have a top five recruiting class for next year, I mean, is that enough to save his save his butt, give him a third year? I don't know, but. Just find it interesting. His name is on this list. And look, it's not been good at Auburn. They got a lot to clean up. And is anybody picking them to go pull off an upset of Georgia this week? I know Georgia didn't look great this past week, but it was Bama in Tuscaloosa. Now they're back at home. It's a rivalry game. Crazy things could happen. But, I mean, they will have to play flawless football if they want to hang with Georgia. They're going to have to not turn the ball over at all and pick off Carson Beck a couple times. Carson Beck got picked off couple times this past week at Alabama. Was it three interceptions? Most he's ever thrown in a game. All right. Thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to every dayers. Keep coming back and checking us out. And hey, for your second listen, you can check out Locked On College Football with Spencer McLaughlin talking all the biggest stories across the world of college football. Of course, we talk just SEC here. Thank you guys again for checking us out. Subscribe. If you haven't done so yet, um, if you're listening to just the podcast version, you can do that. We're on Apple iTunes, Spotify, and all that. Uh, so if you're watching us on, on YouTube, subscribe to the audio version on Spotify or iTunes. If you listen on iTunes and Spotify, 
encourage you to check out the YouTube version of our show and hit subscribe on there, building a nice audience there on YouTube. Just hit the little subscribe button. It takes two seconds. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching Locked on SEC. We'll be back tomorrow. Come, back, come on back and check us out.